Hello math class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson four of unit three. The last of this, this particular unit, but we've remember doubled them up. So unit three and four are together. Uh, there's no test after this one, but there is a quiz. Uh, so if you have any questions after this, please let me know and definitely practice up. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do three examples where we just solve problems uh, different word problems where sometimes we have to draw them or we're given the picture using the sine law or the cosine law, the 180 degree rule, any rules that we know so far. Let's just go right into it. Example one, two security cameras in a museum must be adjusted to monitor a new display of fossils. The cameras are mounted six meters above the floor directly across from each other on opposite walls. The walls are 12 meters apart. Okay, I'm gonna to start to draw a diagram here. We have a room and it says that the security cameras are 12 meters apart on opposite sides of the room, so they're gonna be in each corner. Camera A, camera B, and they are six meters above the ground. I assume that's how high the ceiling is. Uh, directly across from each other on opposite walls. The walls are 12 meters apart. The fossils are displayed on a case. Uh, case is made of wood and glass. The top of the display case is 1.5 meters above the floor. Okay, so I'm going to draw the display case. Uh, let's see. The distance from the camera on the left to the center to the top of the display is 4.8 meters. Okay, so it's closer to this side if it's only 4.8 meters to it. So it's right here. And it is 1.5 meters high. And from this to the top, essentially where we're watching the fossils, the line of sight, this would be 4.8 meters. Okay, we also have the line to this camera. And just uh, extrapolating, if the whole thing is six, and this is 1.5 from here to here, it's 4.5 meters, doesn't give us that but we should be able to figure it out. We want to have both cameras aiming directly at the display, so we want to find out what this angle is, theta, and what this angle is, alpha. So we want to determine the angles of depression, so angles from the horizontal to the case at all times. Uh, let's see, this is a right angle triangle here and a right angle triangle here. Uh, I see I have two sides, right? I have uh, from here, I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I can just use a regular trigonometric ratio to find out what theta should be. Uh, opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine theta is equal to opposite is 4.5 and hypotenuse is 4.8. So I'm going to then sine inverse 4.5 divided by 4.8. So I get theta, which is 69.6 degrees. So that is what theta should be to have that camera pointing directly at the top. Let's see, now I want to find this angle. What do I have? I have a side, what else can I find? Well, I don't really have much else. I could find Z using the large triangle, right? If I use this big triangle, I have two sides and an angle now that are all next to each other. So I can use those to find out here. So I can use uh, the cosine law to find out what Z should be. Z is across from our newly known angle, 69.6. So it's going to be on the left side of the equal side, the starting point. Let's do that. So I might be able to pull it down to refer to it if necessary, but you have it on your page. So Z squared is going to be equal to, I don't have them labeled, but one side would be 4.8 squared plus 12 squared plus two times 12 times 4.8 times the cosine of our new angle, 69.6. Uh, we would 
then find if we did all this, we find z squared is equal to 126.95. Therefore, z would be 11.27. So we would punch in uh, cosine 69 times these, write that down. Square 12, that's 144, write that down. Square 4.8 and write that down. Add them all up and square root them to find out what z is. So now we have this value right here. It is 11.27 meters. So now what I can do is I can use a regular trigonometric ratio sign again, opposite over hypotenuse to find out what alpha should be. So sine of alpha is equal to 4.5 over 11.27, opposite over hypotenuse. Alpha is equal to the inverse sine of those two numbers. Alpha is equal to 23.5 degrees. So now we found the two angles that the cameras must be pointed at. Determine the angles of depression to the nearest degree. This would be 70. This one would be 24. Okay. If there are any questions about that, please, please let me know. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated a problem, just with all the different steps. There's many different triangles within the triangle, uh, so it's really just practice. If you have any questions, please let me know. Let's go to example two. Okay, we're given an example here, and I know the picture's a little bit hard to see, so I am going to let's see if I can do this. Ah, oh, good. I'm going to draw it out as well. So the world's tallest freestanding totem pole is located in BC. It was carved from a single cedar log by uh, carver Chief Mungo Martin with a team that included his son. It was erected in 1956. Determine the height of the totem pole. So first of all, there's a little bit of a slope to the land. So we have, uh, let's see, our totem pole right here. And the land slopes up a little bit, but we're gonna pretend that there is a line right there. And what we know is that that angle is five degrees, that's given to us. We also know that we have a point here, this is point D, that this angle here is 40 degrees. We measured, uh, we paced out from the totem pole 42 meters. Uh, and we estimated the angle of elevation to the sun to be 40 degrees. So that's where we got um, this from. And this was also an estimate. So the first thing that I know that we can do is I can find out um, what this angle is right here. And in doing that, that will help me find out more information about the triangle to eventually determine the height of the totem pole. At this point, I only know one thing about the height of the totem pole um, triangle. It is not very helpful. Let's see. Let's go the other one. So um, to find out what this one is, I can use my 180 degree rule and subtract 40 and five from 180. So 180, subtract 40, subtract five, gives us 135 degrees. And then to find this angle right here, which we'll call theta, I take 180 and subtract 135. So theta is equal to 180, subtract 135. Theta is equal to 45 degrees. Okay. That was right there. That's 45 degrees. Since this angle right here is 90 degrees, and I know that there's five degrees in this part of the triangle, I can find this angle. 90 minus five gives us 85 degrees. Okay, I'm getting to know some more information about it. Now I have two of these angles. I can find the third. 180, subtract these two angles would get me the third. Let's call this angle alpha. Alpha is equal to 180, subtract 45, subtract 85 for 50 degrees for alpha. So 
the strategy here is I'm just piecing together different parts of this triangle. Mostly angles for now, but now that I have all this information, I think I can use the sine law to find out what the height of the totem pole is. I have a side and an angle across from one another, and I have the angle that's across from my unknown. So x over the sine of 45, right, across from it, would be equal to 42 divided by the sine of 50, the angle that is across from it. I can rearrange to find x all by itself. x is equal to sine of 45 times 42 divided by the sine of 50. And we would find x or the height of the totem pole to be 38.8 meters. So the totem pole is 38.8 meters high. Okay. If there are any particular questions, again, please let me know. Um, but we just used a bunch of our angle rules till we found enough angles and sides that we could use the sine law. One more problem. So this one is in 3D. We've got two triangles. One of them is laying within the river, and one of them is completely vertical from the edge of the river to the edge of the river. You can see the angle sign here. We have a right angle. So that means that this side and the river are completely straight up and sideways. So Brendan and Diana plan to climb this cliff, but need to know the height. Uh, they've taken some measurements and estimates, and they are given here. So, we'll show. What we want to do is find out what AC is. We want to find the height. Uh, I'm missing information, though. I only know one angle. So if I can find out what this side is, because this is a right angle triangle, I should be able to use a trigonometric ratio um, to find out. So I'm going to want to find out what side BC is. Uh, let's start by finding out our other angle. Our other angle would be 180, so angle C here, would be 180 subtract 50 and 60. So 180 subtract 50 subtract 60 gets us 70 degrees. So this angle is 70 degrees and it is across from 60 meters. I want to find out what this side is over here. So side uh, BC over sine of 50, that is the angle that is across from it, would be equal to uh, the side 60 over the sine of the angle that's across from it, we just found to be 70. Uh, we can rearrange this, we would find that the side BC is equal to 48.9 meters. So that is this side over here. Now I can find out what the height is using a trigonometric ratio. Uh, I have opposite is my interesting side and adjacent I have. I'm going to use tan. Tan of the angle 76 is equal to opposite. That is what I want to know. Divided by adjacent, which is what I just found out, 48.9. Uh, I can then rearrange x is equal to tan 76 multiplied by 48.9. So x, or the height of the cliff, is equal to 196.2 meters, which makes sense. If it's a cliff, it's going to be quite a few meters. We found out what the width of the river was, 48.9 meters. So um, kind of all the numbers check out. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. There is a large key idea, um, some things that you need to know, uh, some things to remember. Times you can use the sine law, times you can use the cosine law. So check all those out and definitely do lots of practice problems before the quiz. Uh, but I'll see you in the next unit. Thanks so much, everyone.